there. Let's see if we can get a decently documented uh, video of the process that I use for making my plaster stamps that I use for pottery. Um, first of all, I start with casting my plaster blanks. And here are my super high-tech uh, materials that I used for that. Here, let's get this adjusted up here so that we can see the stuff. All right, we start with our mixing tools. <laughs> this is this uh, um, large McDonald's cup is perfect for um, mixing one pound of plaster. So I measure on my scale um, 0 0.70 pounds of water into this cup. Make sure you tear it so that it doesn't, you know, so that you're not uh, having the weight of the cup in there. Same with this. Put that on the scale. Tear out the weight and um, put one pound of uh, number one pottery plaster in there. And then you're just going to take that and sprinkle it in just, you know, like you would just sprinkle it over the top of the water, let it sink. And then you let it slake for a minute and a half to two minutes, I believe it is. And then after it's soaked that long, then you mix it for another two minutes. And then it's time to pour it into the molds. And here are our molds. Here's, here's the first molds that I used. <laughs> Paper cups. They work great. Um, that will give you... Um, a the the larger paper cup, which is I believe an eight ounce, will give you um, a a medallion like that. And this is what I use mainly for all of my mugs and my ornaments and my kitchen magnets. Um, and then the smaller oh, do I have any of the smaller? Oh, I probably don't. Um. The smaller paper cup will give you a medallion about this size, and this I use for pins and magnets and um, necklace pendants. So that's what this size paper cup will give you. But then I also like to do buttons, and um, I also thought, well, maybe I could get more of the larger size all together. So I got these silicone um i believe the top one there is a baking mold and this one i think is just a candy mold i don't think that one can go in the oven but um i got them off of wish amazon i don't know they weren't very much but anyway those are made out of silicone um and you can see i don't keep them very clean but they work great you just you're gonna you just pour the plaster in there and then i keep them on like a wear board or a tray and then I'll like you can you can hear how it's it's vibrating when I move it across if I do that that'll shake a lot of the bubbles out and then I can also pick up the wear board that it's on and give it some taps down same with the paper cups you really have to make sure that you're tapping the air bubbles out because if you don't you end up with um corner bubbles which are no good um makes it really difficult to get a nice <laughs> a nice uh smooth design when you've got corner bubbles like that so anyway that's that's how i cast my blanks so i'll just uh, i fill these up with um the plaster with the paper cups i only fill it up to about an inch and a half maybe a, if that inch inch and a half um and that's that's enough to make a a nicely a nice size stamp to hold on to. Okay, so I get those cast as blanks and then I, after they've set up, you pop them out and I put them in front of my heater and let them dry. Um, trust me, you don't want to try and carve damp plaster because it doesn't work. You end up with powder that will not 
brush away. It just, it, it ends up being like sticky. So, so we end up with our blanks here and with the paper cup, you can see there's, there's a little bit of a ridge there. And for that, I'll just take a little bit of sandpaper and just give that a little bit of a, a scrape across just to knock off the burrs around the edges. Um, another another thing that I could use is um, a mold cleaning tool. Um, and I use, I just scrape around the edge like that. And that makes it nice and smooth. Um, this is also a good tool for if you, if your diameter is too big and you want to knock down the diameter, I will go around like so and give it a scrape. So I think I need to pop this back up a little bit more. Oh, come on. All right, there we go. Okay, so um, in order to get your design onto your blank, you have to transfer it. So I print out my designs. I just go find images that I like um, on Google. Um, since I know even though I'm tracing them on, after I'm done carving them, they never look anything like the image anyway. So um, I just, that's, it gives me a starting point. And then I flip that over on my light box and I'll just trace out the reverse of the design on the back. So I did that with this one. That one's cut to size for the medallion that I'm working on. And then um, I take it like this and I get my pencil and I This is difficult, you guys. <laughs> I need a cameraman or something. Okay, so I take my design here and then I'm just going to scribble over it. And this will give it a layer of graphite over the back from my pencil lead. Okay, and I know that I've got that outer ring that I need to transfer. So, all right, so I've got that layer of graphite over the design on the right side, and then my line drawing on the back side. And then with the paper cup ones, there's always a seam line, and so I like to have that seam line at the top. So then I will line up my design. Can we see that all right? That's hard to see, isn't it? Oh, too bright a light. Okay. Okay, so I've got that on there and then I will use my itty bitty ball stylus tool. It's got a little bit of a, it's a cheap one, so it's got a little bit of a, a tilt to the ball and I kind of like that because it lets me get in there nice and tight. Okay so I'm just going to use this like I would a pencil. I, I've also used my mechanical pencil before to do this and I'm just going to trace around it um, and hit all of those lines that I put on the uh, sketch on the back. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, it doesn't need to be super precise, but you do want to get your lines in, you know, where you want them, because this is, this is how you're going to map out your carving. All right, so we've got our acorn cap here. And I'll probably put in a whole lot more detail on these than is even on the original design. Let's get our stems in here. Um, the uh, small acorn stamp that I already have, I put a lot of detail into the cap, which is kind of fun. So, 
With the way that the stylus is shaped, I'm actually gouging into the plaster a little bit um, as I'm tracing, which isn't a bad thing. It actually will help me keep track of my lines should they fade while I'm working because, I mean, it's just graphite. It can rub off. Um, so if it does rub off too much, I still have a little bit of a like groove to follow. Okay. Ah. Okay. And then we get the outside ring for our border. And I've I've taped this the the image down with scotch tape before. It's just I haven't felt like it lately, so that and I'm out in my studio where the scotch tape isn't. I were in the house I might use it but okay so I've got that all traced around and now if I lift that up it's all transferred onto the face of my plaster yay so then um you have to envision your design in reverse so Anything that you want to stand out has to be carved deeper. Um, and anything that you want to be closer to the background has to be carved shallower, which can be difficult in some instances. Like if you look at the wings, you would think, oh, well, wings are very thin. I need to carve them very shallow. Well, there's two wings on each side and they overlap and they have to rest on the body which is um is in a decent amount of relief so it's going to stick out and it has to overlap so you've got to it it's difficult to work your brain around it the first few times but once you get the hang of it um it's a little bit easier to figure out how you're going to do the uh the design so, should we do the acorn one or should we do the next B one? Let's just do the B. So here's, here's my next size down for the B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my carving with the little ball stylus. And I'll just do the smaller things like, say, antenna. And it's not so much a carving as it is just a scratching. That's all I'm doing is scratching into that plaster. And then scratching into the plaster here. And, you know, you can see I'm blowing things around as I work. Tuck that in my box. Um, and then I can get the little leggies here. Um, and... Right now, I'm just kind of roughing in. Here's my other handy dandy tool. Um, roughing in the parts so that I know where they're at. And like you can see that I've got details on here, like you know, the, the stripes on the abdomen and the, the inner circle here and the eyes here. Those won't stick around. I will have to either retransfer those or just eyeball them once I get to the point where I have to put those details in. Because right now, I am just roughing out the general shapes that I need to scoop out of there. So, I'll get these leggies in here and we'll call that good. Okay. 
Sorry, you can tell I'm a mom, can't you? Leggies. <laughs> I have a baby niece and my um, one of my um, good friends also just had a baby. And so too many babies around to talk about their cute little leggies. Okay, so I've got that one. And then my next roughing in tool that I use a lot is just this little spear-shaped dental tool. And um, I have it wrapped with um, cohesive bandage tape just to make it so that it's easier for me to grip because I grip really close to the point. And so then I just use this. And again, this kind of, it's cheap, and so it's got a little tiny bit of a scoopy curve to it, and I like that. So I'll use this to just start roughing out. And I'm not, I'm not trying to gouge in deep. I'm just trying to establish an outline for the little sections here. So start with this section. And I do work in sections, you know, I'll work on the head first. This is how I did the larger one. I started with the head. If you're one of those people that really cringes at scraping noises this might not be the the uh, technique for you I don't mind it so I roll with it it's I'm one of those people that doesn't enjoy the um, feeling of moist clay that isn't wheel slick you know what I mean um, I like to have that slip layer to work with or it just feels nasty to me. So, all right, so we've got that section roughed out. And I'll just scrape a little bit away here. There. And then the next step is to round out that section to carve it deeper and get it concave and also round. And for that, I'll use one of these scoopy ends. If it's a larger section, I'll use this one. If it's a smaller section, I'll use this one. So I can start with this one. Make it easier for you to see here. All right. It really is just a progressive scraping away. Scrape it away and scrape it away and scrape it away and test it and scrape it some more. See what I mean about the squeakiness? <laughs> So in addition to using the little scoopy tools, I, oh geez, I apologize. I'm not doing a very good job of making this visible enough for you. I can't like do the work by looking at it through the screen. <laughs> so I'm like peering over my, in my uh, phone here and around it. 
wrapping stuff out of the way here. So. But it, yeah, in addition to using the, um, the scoopy tools, I can also use um, a larger ball stylus as like a smoothing tool to also um, further gouge um, just by, rather than just like lightly s um, smoothing over it, I'll give it some pressure and give it a good scrape and you can see how much powder is coming out of there. <clears throat> decent amount so now I'll say it's time to test and to test I use plasticine clay just the you know regular old modeling clay I think this was dollar store modeling clay that I grabbed a couple sticks that didn't look like anybody was going to use them and squashed them together and figured okay I'll use that for my test clay. Um, I used to keep regular clay in my work box, but I'm so sporadic with how, you know, how often I work on stuff like this, that by the time I get around to working on another stamp, um, it would dry out. And so I'd have to go find some more. So the plasticine works really, really well because I can just keep using it over and over again. So I got a nice lump here and then I, psh, I need to just give it a squash over a ah, heck and make sure that it's all pressed down on there and then peel it off and there's uh, there's with how um, far I've gotten <laughs> and you can see it's not very even I, I'm going to have to give that a good smoothing um, so I'm not sure how much more I should show you, really. I mean, that's basically what I'm doing is I'm just scraping away with the few tools that I've got. I use the ball stylus. I use the um, the spade and spear-shaped um, dental tools. And then I have my brush to brush away the dust before I do my testing and if things are getting a little too clogged. Um, and it, you know, it really, you really have to have a light hand. You, um, if you want to do a really fine design, I'll also use my needle tool. Um, and that's how I did the veining and the wings and also the, um, hairs on the body and I did I did it in on the head and torso and abdomen um or wait that's the thorax isn't it anyway <laughs> um and that was just with really light scratching making sure that I had everything going the direction that I wanted it to and uh, it worked out really really well um I used to think that using the needle tool would not would not give you um large enough marks to get a nicely defined um, stamp but then I made I made a Wensleydale sheep from somebody's um, uh, lino cut that I found um, and Turns out that digging in there with a needle tool turns out great, and he just—he's just so cute, and everybody really loved the mug that he that came from him. So, so anyway, that's my process. Um, maybe I'll just do some carving, you know, carving videos without any commentary, and um. And then you can see me work on something from start to finish. But that's the process. 
<laughs> I don't really have anything more to tell you right now. If you've got questions, let me know. Comment questions in the comments or, you know, on Clay Buddies if you happen to see this there. Um, and I will do my best to answer those questions. Maybe I'll use it in another video. So, all right. That's that. I'll see you next time. Bye.